Discovery makes some fantastic monohulls, blue water cruisers to take you around the world. The new incarnation of the Discovery 50 Catamaran ticks a lot of boxes, but at a price. What will we think of this one? Let's start this review of the Discovery 50 with our thoughts on the cockpit. So it's a very windy day. What yeah, it's, it is very windy. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, well, this is a fantastic helm, I think. Um, we ha this is actually the second time we've been on a Discovery 50, so we're not seeing this for the first time. But uh, the helm is very impressive. There's excellent visibility, and even more importantly, I feel extremely safe. I am up quite high, but I'm a long way from the water. Um, there's a lot of distance, distance between me and the side deck, so I don't feel like I'm kind of unsafe in any way. The seat is really, really comfortable, and I can see one, I can see one, two, three, four. I can see all four corners of the boat. And yeah, excellent visibility, 360. So I'm impressed. I really like this swimming position. I mean, this is exactly what I want. I want something that gives me good visibility, is well protected. You don't have a hard top bimini. This is, this is a soft top bimini, but you've got excellent visibility to the sails as well. Um, with the clear panels, obviously all the lines run back to this like ginormous winch right here. These two huge winches, and um, I, I can't see how you could top this. The only helm that was better than this was the Privilege because it had the uh, the hard bimini and the hard screen. So, but this is fantastic. So moving on to deck, we can see that the Discovery 50 has some amazing handholds. It is a very safe boat to move around and work. We would, however, have liked to have seen flush mounted hatches. Now let's go over to Teresa to see what she thought on the day. Really wide side decks. Uh, you know, you've got the, uh, the hand rail, the grab rail to, that, that goes along the entire length of the coach roof, which is really good. Uh, the, the hatches aren't flush, so there is a bit of a tripping hazard there, but um, uh, oh well. And they've got a really nice little seating area for it as well. So that's a, that's something a bit new, I think, the, the Discovery Cat. So that's that's a really great feature, actually. I think you get a lot of use out of that at anchor, definitely. And with a transom-mounted life raft, it's only the lack of flush-mounted hatches that lose this Discovery a point. So nine out of 10, well done for safety and design. <music> If I had to sum up the finish of the Discovery 50 in one word, it would be quality. Look at this slow panning shot of the saloon. Everything is finished to a supremely high standard. I think on this boat, the work surfaces are actually made of marble. They are routed, everything fits perfectly. It is a really luxurious finish to the galley. Similarly, the wood, this particular model, all made in oak, the finish superb, top of the range appliances, and everything feels really sturdy. Similarly, looking at the leather work, the leather work is bespoke, stitching is fantastic, and look at this chart table. The quality of the joinery evident here. Look at the inlay on this table, absolutely amazing. This to me looks like rosewood inlaid in oak. This is some quality craftsmanship. Even the switch panel itself is a work of art. I am so happy with this boat. What a well-made living space. Similarly, if we move to the exterior, we can look at the fixtures and the fittings. These things are over-engineered. The fittings and the standing are having absolutely fantastic here, all top-notch. Unfortunately, we were not able to see the engine bay, but I have no problem in awarding the Discovery 50 10 out of 10. Well done. Little coffee table. <laughs> my morning, morning espresso. No, this is really, this is very tasteful. Very, very tasteful. Um, yeah. So you've got this seating area here, obviously with a nice little round table. I've never seen this in another catamaran. That's, that's lovely. And then you've got a fantastic, huge U-shaped seating area, just, just this way. Get used to this. This is great. This is fantastic. We've got, in terms of ventilation in the cockpit, it's pretty good. We've got an opening hatch above, so that will give us some ventilation and obviously good visibility, visibility to the sails um, in the cockpit. Uh, we also have a large kind of, um, screen, sliding screen window um, here, and then two large open hatches. We'll go inside in a minute and I'll show you. But uh, yeah, I can imagine on a nice breezy anchorage, you would get a really lovely uh, flow of air through the whole inside as well as into the cockpit. So 
so so this category looks at all aspects of interior design, including the practicalities of the living situation on the boat. And as you've just heard, the cockpit is fantastic. The thing continues inside. I mean, look at this beautiful space. You've got a fantastic U-shaped galley, which is absolutely ginormous by catamaran standards. And you've got plenty of seating as well as a forward facing nav station, which we'll discuss a little bit more in just a moment. I want to draw your attention to the fantastic panoramic views from inside of the saloon and the excellent ventilation from all those opening hatches as well, including that big sliding door. So this is the saloon of this very spacious 50 foot catamaran. Um, this, is, this has got to be the most amount of interior space in the kind of upstairs area of any 50 foot cap that we've been in so far. It's huge inside, um, but as far as the saloon is actually concerned, uh, we've got a really, we've got kind of like a U-shaped um, settee here with a big table, and you could pull up other chairs to, to dine at, I guess, because it is raised up a little bit off the ground. Um, but yeah, this is really nice. This is a really comfortable seating area. The seats are actually very comfortable. They're, you know, leather, beautiful. This is apparently uh, partly customizable, so you can basically apparently have almost any type of interior that you want. Uh, in terms of interior ventilation, pretty good. You've got two big opening hatches forward and then three opening hatches in the ceiling, so I mean, you can't really get much better than that. And fantastic all round visibility, and we'll actually go to the nav station now so that we can have a look at the visibility when you're keeping the watch underway, but really good visibility. Definitely a really nice connection between kind of inside and outside in terms of when you're at anchor, you can definitely kind of be connected to your outside environment as well. So yeah, let's go have a look at the nav station. So this is the nav station and you can see that the forward visibility is absolutely fantastic. You can see not only the two foresails, but you can also through this opening hatch above me, see the main sail as well. So when you are underway, if you are sitting here on a night watch or whatever, you can easily keep an eye on your sail trim. And of course, with all your instruments here, you can keep an eye on everything else as well. Um, so yeah, AIS, um, you know, wind strength direction, that kind of thing, no problem. Uh, I mean, there's not much more to say. It's, it's perfectly set up. You've, the forward facing navigation, as you may know by now, is something that we would really like in our future catamaran um, and this this is the perfect setup. Let's go down into the holes now and take a look at the accommodations on this Discovery 50 catamaran. As you can see the quality of the woodwork is top notch, it is absolutely beautiful so that's a really lovely feature. This particular catamaran was an owner's version and if you go forward then you'll find the rather spacious shower room. This of course has a separate shower as well as some really lovely vertical windows which give you a fantastic view to where it is that you happen to be anchored or moored. And of course, as I said before, the fittings and fixtures are top quality. It's a really lovely shower room and of course I don't think that that's a surprise to anyone at this point. Pretty bloody about a point of this boat. This is gorgeous, wow. It's like really the quality beautiful. of this joinery. I know someone on the internet said, oh, you know, it's not joinery you're talking about, it's the out. It's the it out, yeah. It's pretty bloody nice. But, you know, a boat of this ilk, that's what you pay for. That's what you Absolutely. Yeah. So this is, is this the main cabin? I don't think it is. This is a, a cabin. <laughs> Beautiful cabin. Um, not completely an island bed, so, uh, and, not, uh, yeah, head height, always head height. It would be nice, I guess, on a 50 foot catamaran that's not performance based to have an island berth in the aft, if the, at the aft part of the hull. So, yeah, like a small point being docked. Very spacious other than that, than that. And you've got the two big opening hatches. Actually, you've got three opening hatches. So really good ventilation in here as well. I think people are gonna get really sick of me talking about ventilation. So that was the master cabin uh, in the master hull and there was a bit of confusion because previous Discovery 50s have had the master cabin forward. We'll talk a little bit more about that in our conclusion. This of course is the guest cabin on the other side, completely identical 
to the master hull. Overall, it's hard not to be wowed by the interior design and livability of this beautiful catamaran. I guess if I was picky, I would dock a point for not having island berths. I think that would be really great on a catamaran of this type. So nine out of 10 for interior design. Let's look at the statistics for the Discovery 50 catamaran. We are looking at a length of 15.7 meters, that is 50 foot. The beam, 7.86 meters, she's 26 foot wide. 1.4 meters with the stub keels, and that sail area isn't huge considering she weighs 16 and a half tons. Now compare that to our racing boat, the 51 foot Uchimer, that's five and a half tons lighter. So this is a heavy boat. She is not gonna point high and she's not gonna be fast, but you'll get there in style and in comfort. So for performance, we are gonna award the Discovery 50 a four out of 10. She is not a performance cruiser. Now let's look to the most contentious category here, the value for money. This 50 foot catamaran comes in at a base price of 1.2 million euros, that's 1.3 million US dollars and over a million British pounds. Fully spec, we've added 100,000. However, that could be significantly higher. These boats are bespoke and the amount of additions you can put onto this are almost infinite. And bear in mind that none of these prices include local taxes. So how do you gauge value for money here? Well, this boat is supremely well built. She is up against her some stiff competition from the privileges built in France and the catamarans built in South Africa, the exquisites and the Neisners. Now UK and European labor rates are higher than those in South Africa and Vietnam. So you don't get as good a value for money. So we are gonna award this boat a four out of 10 value for money. was the Discovery 50 catamaran, uh, as I think we can both agree, a fairly luxurious and beautiful boat. Yes. Um, as you can see, we're no longer in Ruby Rose. We are <laughs> in, uh, we're in Washington of all days, yeah. Washington DC. It's and, our Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, and we are on our way to the Naples Boat Show. So mm. we are gonna be there shortly to do uh, lots of reviews that you have asked for. So the exquisite X5, yes, definitely coming. Um, Maverick, um, Neisner, um, and Tares, all the things we said we were gonna do. So if you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to click on that and also click the notification bell so you don't miss any more episodes. Anyway, without further ado, the Discovery 50, let's start with the good points. Therese? Yeah, well, there aren't really many bad points. I mean, I could list basically everything that that catamaran offers and uh, I could be here all day talking about how good it is. I think the thing about the Discovery 50, and I said this on the day, is that there just doesn't seem to be anything that it's doing wrong, which may sound really kind of, you know, to down with frank praise, but at the end of the day, you have to make sure that there's, it's ticking every box and it really does seem to tick every box. Yep. Um, I particularly like uh, the helm position. I think that helm position is yep. fantastic. And I also really liked the cockpit. It was nice and cozy. Uh, but still spacious and it yep. was nice and enclosed. Uh, I think quite a safe area and probably a very kind of convivial social area as well. And of course, you know, the build quality was fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So positives, um, the build is amazing. Yeah. It is a really beautiful build and classy as well and very not classy. not ostentatious, which mm. I think is saying that it's difficult to do where you're throwing that much money at, at a build. Yeah. So it is a beautiful, beautiful catamaran mm -hmm. and um, there's not a lot that I can say that isn't kind of superlative about yeah, it. Yeah, so, well, this is it. You don't, you don't want to just kind of keep on gushing yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah, it's a beautiful beast. Yeah. Um, so let's do the very few negatives. Can yeah. you think of any? Well, I mean, for most of us mere mortals, you know, we can't afford the price tag, obviously. Yep. It's a very expensive boat, but it's not... Um, you know, if you're looking at a 50 foot catamaran of that build quality, then it, I think, represents reasonable value for money. I mean, it's it's certainly... It's subjective, isn't it? That it, when it you're is, spending that much money. Yeah, so when you compare it, I guess its competitors are like the Privilege and, well, probably many actually boats that we're going to be seeing at Annapolis. So like, Exquisite X5, yeah, you like know, the, the knives. The, so the kind of like the high end 50 foot. That's right. Okay, let me go through the few negatives. And as with a lot of these things, where we are doing high end catamarans, we really are splitting hairs. Yeah. A couple of things. Um, it doesn't have flush mounted hatches. 
Like, why? They just flush them out the hatches, yeah. they're tripping out, so that's yeah. one little thing. Secondly, now, um, Discovery were very, very keen to point out that this, the, the layout of this boat had been specified by the owner, mm. so it didn't have a master cabin. Yeah. Now, what Discovery have done is that they pulled the bulkhead back, mm. um, to no, so pushed it forward to make yeah. a bigger saloon, give you bigger saloon windows, which really does yeah. massively increase the, the forward visibility from the nav station, mm -hmm. but you lose space. Um, in the in the cabin forward forward so that yeah. there was a big forward cabin which is very similar to the dis the privileged, uh, the privileged catamaran mm. what they said was there's just not enough headroom in there yeah you're not getting the headroom so we just we moved which is true yeah so yeah. we made the saloon bigger so I can see what they've done but I think maybe if you want that opulent master cabin if you check back to our privilege video the the real wow factor with those boats is like is the master cabin yeah. like, oh my god yeah yeah it's amazing all i would say on that though and bear in mind that we've never sailed a, a, a privilege that has that that forward master cabin that spans the entire width of the boat i mean they're very impressive to look at mm -hmm. and i think at anchor they'd be amazing i don't know whether on passage if it's a bit bumpy that's where i'd want to be sleeping yeah. that's my only hesitation with those okay forward master cabins so uh, the other things are um, it's 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 not going to perform. It's a it's a luxury cruising catamaran. Yeah, you're not buying a Discovery 50 for the performance. No, you're not at all. You're buying it for the luxurious, you know, chilling around the world, you know, drinking cocktails. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. If you had the option of the Privilege or the uh, Discovery, what would you take? That's um, a difficult one. However, I, I personally really like the Discovery. Yep. Uh, and I, as I said, I, I have a few hesitations over that Ford. Uh, master cabin in the privileges. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, they're beautiful, but as I said, I just wonder whether on passage they would be like the best place to be sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'd, I'd go with the Discovery. They're, they're just beautiful, they're not opulent. I felt like the privileges were quite a little bit too ostentatious for our personal tastes. Don't know. But it, it, it comes, it's purely subjective. Absolutely, you do yeah. what you want with it. I don't know, I think the cockpit is the helm position is better in the privilege. That's true. You do feel like you're in a spaceship. Yep. Um, okay, well, anyway, so listen, yeah. if you're in that position, that is a very, very fortunate decision Absolutely. that you have to make if you're like, which million dollar plus <laughs> Catamaran can I make? So, uh, so yeah, brilliant. Um, so a fantastic boat. I really like that that Discovery 50. Yeah. Um, would I buy one if I had the money? Probably not. I think it's, it's not for me at my age. I think maybe in 10, 15 years time, mm. you know, when I'm wearing like a, a tweed jacket with a suede elbow patch, and smoking a pipe, I'll buy one. If not, I'm not sure. But yeah, I can see why people buy them. Yeah. And I think a good, solid, handcrafted, British built catamaran. Yeah. You know, and you can't really go wrong. And and, and there aren't any other catamarans like that, none that no. are built in, in the UK, no, no, to my knowledge. I wanted to bring actually something up. I feel uh, like we've had a lot of conversation about this in the comments, yep. and it's been one of the criticisms that have been leveled at uh -huh. our reviews, which is, um, I just feel like now is a good chance to maybe address it. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, why are we reviewing catamarans, i.e. the Discovery, the Privilege, the Utrecht 51, and we'll be continuing to review catamarans, you know, in that kind of price range? Kind of around the million dollar mark, a million euro mark. Why are we reviewing these luxury catamarans when we quite clearly can't Don't have afford one? Um, a couple of reasons. Firstly, because um, it's useful for you lot. Yeah. Because there are people that are in a different financial position to us. That are like, actually, I've got 1.3 million. <laughs> Let's see what people have actually sailed a few oceans and aren't brokers have to say about this. Yeah. So it is, you know, we could have just not showed you what we were doing. Mm. So that's the first thing. Secondly, you know, our friend has just bought um, a catamaran that was um, a million dollars new, but eight years on, it's half a million dollars, yeah. and that brings it back into our budget. Mm. So for those of you who said, well, hang on, you can't afford these boats. Yes, that's absolutely correct, but you can buy used versions, mm. and a well-maintained used version can be a really good good buy if, yes. you know, if it's well-maintained. Mm. So that answers that question for yeah. you. Um, but yes, off to Annapolis to look at the new boats. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be back soon with another review. Thank you so much.